On today's video, we will discuss the extinct eastern elk, which used to roam vast regions of the Midwest and eastern United States of America. Centuries back, we would have seen a 900 pound ungulate roaming the landscapes. This animal, along with the American bison, were remnants of the ancient megafauna, which once populated North America, up until their mysterious disappearance at the end of the Pleistocene. Roughly 80% of the megafauna went extinct, although there were survivors, such as the Eastern elk, the American black bear, and the American bison, and various of other large mammals. Up until the mid 19th century, we would have heard large eastern elk bulls screeching in attempt to attract mates and fend off competition. The indigenous inhabitants of North America called the eastern elk Wapiti, which is a Shawnee word for meaning white rump. And we all can see why this name is very relevant to the elk. I mean, look. The habitat of the elk consisted of forest, forest edge, and alpine meadows which are kind of like high elevation grasslands. This forest meadow habitat was once vast in the Eastern United States. This habitat was possible due to intermediate disturbance spatially and temporally, which is mostly done by things such as fire, herbivores, and other natural factors like windstorms. In insect outbreaks, due to the extinction of many herbivores, in the suppression of low intense fires, many of these habitats, such as alpine meadows, have decreased substantially. Which is one reason why we no longer have the eastern elk roaming the landscape. So this brings into question, what happened to the eastern elk which millions used to roam? Hey, what happened? Well, according to historical accounts, the eastern elk started to decline in population as the European settlers arrived. And with them came technology never before seen in North America, such as guns, iron tools, and many other weapons, all of which made killing herbivores easier than ever before. A Northern Woodlands article states that a zoologist wrote in 1871, there are a few stories of blood and lust more disgusting than that detailing the slaughter of the great elk bands. At the time, Survival was very difficult for European settlers, so elk were looked at as a easy target for food as they did not run and hide from human beings. And they were looked at as pests as elk often would trample in on the agricultural plots and steal food that humans worked very hard to cultivate. Oh, come on, man. With the combination of these two things, I would say that the killing of elk was not widely shun upon and the result of such behavior was not considered so due to overhunting and the loss of their habitat the eastern elk population rapidly dwindled famous orientologist john james audubon mentioned by 1851 only a handful of eastern elk could be found in pennsylvania this observation along with many others would be the last because in 1880, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service declared that the eastern elk population is extinct. The western elk population also underwent the same difficulties. So in order to avoid the same fate as the eastern population, conservationists such as Teddy Roosevelt moved to save the species of the west. Many states enacted laws and regulations which banned the hunting of elk and also banned the buying and selling of a lot of elk products. And many national parks were established, such as Yellowstone National Park, which acted as a refuge for many animals. <coughs> Thus, the western elk was saved and now we can enjoy those astonishing creatures on the landscape today. Since the disappearance of the eastern elk, what about the eastern United States now? Well, there's some exciting news. Let me tell you. Okay. As of recent, there have been reintroductions of elk in the eastern United States, many of which have been very successful. Now in Kentucky, there are over 10,000 individual elk. And in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, we have elk roaming the landscape again. Although these elk are not the eastern elk, which now are extinct, they are elk which serve the same ecological role. 
The reintroduced elk are smaller than the eastern subspecies. It will be very interesting to see how these reintroduced elk begin to mold and adapt to their new environments. And with the loss of much of their habitat in which they thrive, we must manage the ecosystems properly so that now the reintroduced elk can live prosperous and thriving lives. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Eye opening will return soon with videos of the same nature. This video supports Vintage Fairy Tale Creations, which is a jewelry company who creates custom pieces. Here are a couple of the pieces right here. They're beautiful, they're unique, and I really like them. So I suggest that you check out the Facebook page and create a custom order. Again, I will see you all next time. It is eye opening. Have a great day.